Moms for Liberty is a fascist organization that originally materialized in opposition to COVID-19 safety precautions in schools, but quickly became known for their anti-LGBTQ plus policies in education. Now, we're not just talking about an ordinary collection of angry conservative Karens who decided to organize. Moms for Liberty is designated as an extremist group by the Southern Poverty Law Center with known ties to extremist organizations like the Proud Boys, and some chapters even have ties to right-wing militias like the Sovereign Citizens and even QAnon. And Vice News has documented harassment and intimidation of school board officials and even students. So these aren't ordinary moms. We're talking about momsies. And I don't think that it's uncharitable to call them momsies considering the number of oopsies that they've made. For example, the Hamilton County chapter in Indiana was forced to apologize after they quoted Hitler in their first issue of their Parental Brigade newsletter. And the shenanigans haven't stopped since then. Last month, members Members of a Florida chapter literally reported a librarian to the sheriff's office claiming that she committed a felony by sharing pornography with minors. But in actuality, the librarian checked out a young adult novel to a 17-year-old student, and to make matters worse, the entire thing was orchestrated by Moms for Liberty. So they got a teacher to ask a student to check out the book, and once it was checked out, said teacher then gave it to Moms for Liberty so they can then file a police report, and they did. And the teacher there was in cahoots with them and didn't even work for the district. She was none other than Vicky Baguette, who successfully got more than 100 books banned in her own district. But you might be thinking, Mike, you're being too hard on them. They've done some good things. For example, in their Telegram channel, they've shared information about a Christmas toy drive for needy children. And sure, that is good, theoretically speaking. But there is a catch, as explained by this TikTok. Unfortunately, what I'm about to show you is real. It's from my friend, Laura Burkhart, who has all the receipts in the world. This screenshot comes from the Moms for Liberty Uncensored Telegram channel. Operation White Christmas. The fourth annual Operation White Christmas is underway. Operation White Christmas is an online toy drive for white families in need. In the interest of racial justice and pro-white advocacy, we want to ensure that white families in need are not turned away as they frequently are by other charitable efforts. Now I am the epitome of white <laughs> and I've done a lot of charity drives and toy drives and I have never seen one with a race requirement. So when they say white Christmas, they're not just talking about snow. Now, the whites only toy drive they shared was organized by the National Justice Party, which is not a real political party. Rather, it is a neo-Nazi group comprised mostly of white supremacists who attended the 2017 Charlottesville March. And that group's event is being promoted in a Moms for Liberty Telegram channel. Now, we're barely scratching the surface here, but by now, I'm sure you kind of get the sense as to what this organization represents and what it's all about, which is why I call them momsies. And now you can probably see why that's that's actually pretty pretty accurate. But the growing prominence of Moms for Liberty in school districts across the country, thankfully, has led to colossal backlash because once other parents find out what they're about, well, they reject what they're doing. As the New York Post reports, progressives dominated school board elections in November after putting up with Moms for Liberty's bullshit for two years, and a majority of the 130 candidates Moms for Liberty endorsed failed to win seats on school boards. In other words, they galvanized normal parents who opposed their fascistic and hateful tactics, and things have only gotten worse for them since then. The Philadelphia Inquirer reports, Philip Fisher is a pastor and Republican ward leader who coordinates faith-based outreach for Philadelphia's Moms for Liberty chapter. He's also a registered sex offender due to a 2012 felony conviction for aggravated sexual abuse of a 14-year-old boy when Fisher was 25. A national spokesperson for Moms for Liberty did not respond to a request for comment about Fisher's criminal history. Sheila Armstrong, another Republican ward leader who chairs the local Moms for Liberty chapter, said she was also surprised. She said Fisher has been active in community outreach events with local and federal law enforcement, and she expressed concern that children were sometimes part of that. The National Moms for Liberty organization held a summit in Philadelphia this past summer where denying transgender identity for children and removing books from school libraries were major themes. So while they were busy screeching about the need to protect children from LGBTQ plus people by banning queer books and gender affirming care, they seemed to overlook the fact entirely that the real threat was among their ranks. It's always the people who you suspect the most, isn't it?
But that's not all, because the Florida Center for Government Accountability reports Christian Ziegler, Florida's GOP chairman and husband of Sarasota County School Board member and Moms for Liberty co-founder Bridget Ziegler, is under criminal investigation after a woman filed a complaint with the Sarasota Police Department alleging the longtime Republican official had raped her. And this is according to a heavily redacted police report obtained by the Florida Trident. The complaint was filed on October 4th, and the alleged sexual battery occurred inside the woman's home in Sarasota on October 2nd, According to the report, among the few words that went unredacted in the report are rape and sexual assault complaint. Now, the Orlando Sentinel adds Ziegler and the woman who he'd known for 20 years agreed to have a sexual encounter, including his wife, on October 2nd. But the woman canceled when she learned Bridget was unable to make it, police said in the affidavit. The woman told detectives she opened her door to walk her dog and Ziegler entered her apartment and sexually assaulted her, the affidavit states. The victim advised Christian did not wear a condom and he stated, quote, I'm leaving the same way I came in, the affidavit states. Now, to be clear, no allegations have been made against Bridget Ziegler at the time that I record this video, at least, and every sexual encounter that she's had with the accuser has been consensual as far as we know, but this is all problematic for a number of reasons. First and foremost, the husband of a Moms for Liberty co-founder is an alleged sexual predator. Second of all, as Alejandro Carabayo points out, Bridget Ziegler might not be a predator herself, but she is a major proponent of LGBTQ plus censorship in Florida, even even though she is a closeted bisexual. So if LGBTQ plus people supposedly pose a threat to children, as this organization suggests, wouldn't it logically follow that Bridget Ziegler, a bisexual woman, also poses a threat to children? Hmm. Now, she is not the first hate mongering closet case to get exposed, and she certainly won't be the last. But the fuck ups for this organization keep piling up, and after taking repeated L's, at some point the members of this organization and chapters across the country are going to have to distance themselves from the bigger organization if they want people to believe that they actually care about kids. But here's the thing they don't. They never cared about kids, but as the organization continues to implode, more people are going to learn that they are the ones we should be protecting children from, because as the saying goes, every conservative accusation is a confession, and Moms for Liberty is demonstrating how true that is in real time. So we'll have to see how long this organization survives, but this is all turmoil that is completely self-inflicted, and uh, it's not really that surprising because conservatives who are genuinely bad people are going to do bad things. So I don't find this surprising, but it's nice to kind of see this terrible fascistic momsy organization um, shit the bed. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Woke ide